India has promised the world that it would go net zero by the year 2070. What this means is by 2070, India would put out no more greenhouse gases than it can absorb back. It cannot be done unless you completely decarbonize the Indian electricity sector, which means no more burning of coal or gas. The oceans are full of energy. You go to the seashore, stand there, you see waves dashing all the time. You see the up-down movement of waters all the time, the bobbing movement. And there are tides rushing into the land. And then there are underwater rivers, which are called currents, flowing in many places. So the oceans are full of energy. This ocean energy is going to be a very major source of renewable energy. Now, you might wonder why it has not happened yet. See the number of ways of generating ocean energies. There are proven technologies, but this is not taken off because they are costly. And why wouldn't they be costly? Of course, it's a new technology. It's very, very incipient stages of development. A anything at this stage would be costly indeed. Why? Wasn't solar costly at one point in time? When you say 2010, 2011, solar used to cost 18 rupees a kilowatt hour. And then it fell all the way to 2 rupees before rising to 3 rupees today. Such a steep fall in less than a decade. How did it happen? It happened because the world scaled up. And initially supported by uh, government subsidies and then everybody started putting up these projects. The cost of the equipment came down. Uh, the financiers got comfortable with this. So cost of funds was also, also came down. And today we have solar very much mainstreamed. Like that, it is possible to mainstream ocean energies also and it is certainly bound to happen. Now, the other source of clean energy is nuclear power. Now, the problem with nuclear, as we all know in India, is that we do not have the fuel. For nuclear, you need uranium. CEEW has estimated that India's nuclear power capacity should go up to 225 gigawatts from 6.7 or 6.8 gigawatts. This means something like 35 times increase. Now, where will we go for uranium? Here is where I must talk a little about India's three-stage nuclear program. India, back in the 1950s, chalked out a three-stage nuclear program in which in the first stage, it would use imported uranium to produce electricity and alongside also produce plutonium. When you use uranium, you also produce plutonium, which is also a fissile material. In the second stage, you use plutonium and in the you blanket the plutonium reactors with thorium and while the plutonium is producing electricity, it is also converting this thorium into another fissile material called uranium-233. Uranium-233 is not naturally available, but it can be made in this way. So when you have uranium-233, that is a fissile material, you can use it in reactors and produce electricity. India is somewhere, you know, between the first and second stages of this three-stage program. And it's just a matter of time, matter of years before India gets to the thorium cycle also. When we do that, well, it, it's almost like a panacea. India has, India is blessed with a lot of thorium resources. We can use that and produce nuclear energy. Do we have the technology for making this thorium-based nuclear reactors? We don't today. The basic science is well understood, but the Baba Atomic Research Center is working on a number of technologies related to thorium one of which is called molten salt breeder reactors. And the good news is BARC, BARC, is putting up a 5 megawatt demonstration plant at Vishakapatnam. Construction is about to begin. It could take a few years. The beauty about uh, both uh, ocean technologies and thorium is that both of them produce a steady stream of electricity. No ups and downs like wind and solar. So you don't need a storage interface. If you want to use wind and solar, you necessarily have to have some storage facility because on the one end, the generation of electricity keeps going up and down. But on the other end, you need a steady stream of electricity to supply to the consumers. So you necessarily need storage for that purpose. But here in this case, they are 24 by 7 producers of electricity. So you don't need storage for that also. 
with these two technologies, India can be pretty sure that it can redeem its promise to the world of going completely net zero by the year 2070. For more such videos, subscribe to Business Line.